Thank you. It's good to be here, and uh, I'd like to thank the organizers once again for this event uh, to give us the uh, to give us the opportunity to participate and make a contribution. Um, I presented uh, a few months ago in this forum, and I wanted to give you an update on what we're doing with uh, cloudification and Deutsche Telekom. I'm head of the um, International Technology and Services Delivery Unit, and uh, one of my tasks is to uh, cloudify some of the core telco services that Deutsche Telekom is aiming to cloudify in the next few years. To start, I wanted to refer back to our strategy as a company. Digitalization is one of the key elements of our strategy as a telco. As you can see on the left in the magenta color, that's actually a summary of our strategy as a group. On the right and the white, it's a summary of our technology that we shared in the last Capital Markets Day from our technology group, from the group that I belong to in the company. And there you see in bold, cloudification is key to our strategy as a company. And uh, the cloudification effort at Deutsche Telekom started under the brand of PennNet a couple of years ago. It's a, uh, an entity of uh, Deutsche Telekom was set up once again to focus on cloudification and to make it easier to deploy infrastructure and applications across the group in the cloudification area. So why is uh, cloudification and digital transformation is important for us as a telco? You could see in this slide, which is public information from uh, Morningstar, that the web scale players have managed to capitalize the market much, much better than telcos in the last few years. And these web scale players, a lot of them are cutting into offerings and services that are key to us as a telco. They're into voice, they're into messaging, they're into video. They're getting closer and closer to our end users, to our customers, which we consider as key asset to our business as a telco. So Deutsche Telekom, amongst other telcos, we see no choice but to speed up this digital transformation and speed up cloudification. At the same time, we wanna do it where it makes sense to ensure the desired outcome for us Cloudification means become more efficient, become faster when it comes to time to market, and provide a better custom experience. Quick status on our infrastructure. This is our distributed cloud infrastructure. We've been building this for the last couple of years. This year we'll complete our infrastructure across 12 countries in Europe. And the basic layout, we have three major data centers where we have our core cloud infrastructure spread out in three countries. In each country, we have two front-end data centers where we have front-end cloud instances. And the reason we have that is we have to take into consideration in our buildup the geopolitical requirements of the region, which may not be similar in other, in other regions or other continents. Mind you that some of the countries we service in Europe are not part of the EU, hence we need to take all the regulatory um, requirements, especially when it comes to cross-border data, when it comes to end-user information into consideration as we build this cloudified infrastructure. We also have our service operations center up and running in uh, Romania, managing the infrastructure and uh, quite a few of the applications I will share with you in a minute. And then we have our test bed where we test all new releases in uh, Zagreb in Croatia. Now we spent a lot of time and money on this infrastructure. We've learned a lot. And uh, now we're spending more and more time and more money on how we can leverage it by building applications on top. Just to give you an idea of what we've been doing, especially in the area of automation when it comes to infrastructure. Last year, it would take us at least two weeks to create a cloud instance on this infrastructure. This year, because of automation, once the machines are cabled and wired, we can actually create a cloud instance in under three hours. We've discovered, we've discovered that automation is key, not only for speed, but also for efficiency. When you have 12 countries, you have to 
replicate infrastructure in and then build uh, service and applications on top, it would be costly to have to do that every time from scratch manually. That defeats the purpose of having a cloud infrastructure. Where we at in cloudification is a, an interesting position. We have across the, um, the countries that we cover, we still have traditional offerings, monolithic stacks in, in voice and in packet and so on. We have virtual silos, sort of local clouds. And then when it comes to PanNet, the pan-European implementation of clouds, we have a cloudified stack. So we are in a good position to compare across the evolution of these telco services. And for us, it's important to compare and learn in order to not necessarily select the final outcome. It could be that we end up with a mixture of offerings. Most importantly is to understand and realize what is that we need to achieve in our cloudification journey in order to get the desired outcome again be very efficient, very quick to market, and be able to leverage better customer experience. And we, if, we, if um, some of our suppliers actually move forward with, with the, uh, some of the offerings, make them more digital, um, break them down into microservices, then we can move to the cloud native stack, which is our desired output or desired outcome. However, we don't want to do it for the sake of cloudification. We want to do it as we see the benefits of what we're trying to build and offer as a telco. What we've learned in the last few months that is very important to use iteration, to use constant integration, constant development, to work, having our engineers work with our customers, work with our suppliers. A uh, one one-step implementation of a cloud infrastructure is not an indication of how much we can benefit from that infrastructure or how much we can benefit from the applications that run on top. It's very important to always challenge ourselves to find this optimal position. We have a series of products and services now that are running over this infrastructure and there are different stages depending on technology availability, depending on market uh, acceptance, and also depending on the investment life cycle of some of these platforms. So these services and platforms are in different stages of cloudification. Again, if we have a financial cycle, we don't want to rip out all of the infrastructure and the machines and the platforms and just put a cloud instance for the sake of cloudification. It has to always make financial sense. Mind you, a lot of these services are becoming more commoditized, so there's no room for over-investing or investing for the sake of investing to uh, cloudify. I'd like to zoom in on a couple, just to share with you our observations, our learnings, as we build these, uh, these services over the cloud infrastructure. The first one is the Evolved Packet Core. And here we are working with multiple vendors on how we can have a single instance, not physically single, but one instance distributed that could be shared by multiple countries, multiple entities to run our packet core. When um, we worked, one of the suppliers, we asked them to help us set up a 10 gigabit instance to see how it performs. And when we did everything right and we flipped the switch, we got 7 gigabit output out of the instance and we weren't very happy with that. We weren't really impressed with the performance. Then we went into an iterative process, working with them, working with some of the uptakers of this application, and having our engineers constantly challenge themselves. We looked at certain things like traffic, east-west traffic. That's traffic that runs between virtual machines. And we realized there was too much of it running that was not necessary. By optimizing that, we managed to increase the output by 30%. Then we weren't happy with that. We kept on analyzing and on uh, developing and integrating. We looked at technologies like queuing, uh, like DPDK, and then we deployed that technology, and then we managed to get another 10, 
increase in the output of, the, uh, of this cloud instance on EPC. And then we said we want to challenge ourselves further. We want, to look, we want to look for other ways to increase the output. Then we looked at the vRouter, we looked at the hashing mechanism, and we optimized that, and that gave us another 10, 15% increase. And finally, we said, how about we take this over the top? How about we look for something that would really give us an exponential uh, output of, on performance? So we realized that some of the queuing uh, that we deployed working with uh, a, a, a traditional NIX was not optimal. So we deployed smart NIX with virtual queuing. And as you can see from the slide, then our output went up exponentially to 60 gig. So this goes to show that by just deploying the, the cloud infrastructure and assuming it's going to give the best output is not the right assumption. It's very important to work in iterations to reach that maximum uh, performance output, because this makes a big difference when it comes not only to uh, performance and quality, it makes a big difference when it comes to efficiency. We need to be very competitive as a, as a provider. And hopefully next time uh, we have a chance to meet, I'll share with you further enhancements that we do in this area. Now, this was a very good example of how we can leverage the bottlenecks or leverage fixing the bottlenecks in the infrastructure to get the maximum output out of a, a cloud-based applications. I'm going to share with you another example which leverages not only working the infrastructure to maximize the output, but also leveraging automation. And it's a completely different uh, offering. This is more of a B2B offering. It's cloud CPE. It's highly demanded by our customers, small and medium enterprise throughout Europe. They see a big value in uh, basically managing their, their CPEs or VPNs in, in a cloudified fashion. In here, we did the first deployment with our suppliers, and we realized that the, uh, the offering was very, um, I would say, slow per our standards what we wanted to achieve from a, from a cloudified platform. For instance, the, the provisioning of the service was very slow, was not acceptable um, to, to our customers. The deployment of new releases or the addition of a new country onto the platform would take days, would take six, seven days. The process was highly manual. Establishing disaster recovery also would take many, many days. And there were challenges in uh, figuring out how to connect or how to include equipment already existing on customer premises sitting behind the CPE equipment like router and firewalls. So we, we worked again in iterations with our supplier and we managed to do great things. Some of the things I'd like to share with you, for instance, on the fulfillment, we managed to reduce the configuration time from almost four minutes to less than 60 seconds, which is a big improvement given that this fulfillment portal interface is handled or is used directly by our customers. So having to wait four minutes to set up a VPN is not the desired outcome we want to give when it comes to customer experience. So we managed to drive that tremendously down by a series of iterations uh, working on that uh, provisioning system. Other areas that actually um, gave good results were the automation of the onboarding of a new instance, onboarding of a new country. That reduced the onboarding time from six, seven days to actually three hours. Uh, on, the, on the performance side, we used the same logic and mechanism we used for EPC, and we looked at the challenges of the infrastructure to improve performance, and here, for instance, we increased the throughput by 500% by taking out the bottlenecks between application and infrastructure. And we improved certain elements like packet loss. We started out with one plus percent packet loss. By the time we finished our optimization, our iteration process, we ended up with packet loss less than 0.01%. So to summarize, we must not from our experience, take for granted that once we've got everything together and working, we must not accept that this is it when it comes to cloudification. 
There's a lot more that has to happen. And it's never, I would say, it's, it's never ending. Constant development, constant integration is key because we strongly believe as we keep on doing sprints, working with our customers, our suppliers, we keep on improving these cloud implementations. And again, that would give us the desired outcome we want when it comes to efficiency, customer experience, and time to market. So to summarize, Deutsche Telekom, we believe in OpenStack. Uh, we, we strongly believe that uh, we could do now high demand virtual network functions. They're very possible. We need to leverage technologies, the right technologies, in order to implement those. We need to, again, make sure that what we put in application software is working with the right hardware components, with the right infrastructure, in order to get the best outcome. And last but not least, we need to think cloud. Everything we do must be done automatically, must be automated, be it uh, provisioning, service fulfillment, be it uh, operation, be it life cycle management, we have, to, we have to automate. Automation is key. Without automation, then it makes the cloudification more expensive. If you take in um, a, an instance, you want to replicate it seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. If you want to do it manually, it's going to cost more than actually building traditional stacks. Reason for it is it's much more complex. In traditional stacks, we used engineers that did configuration. Um, now we need software developers to do integration and development constantly. So it's important that when we cloudify, we think automation. Automation is going to be key for us as a telco or for us as an industry to really leverage or maximize the benefit of cloudification. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much for listening.